Hey guys, it's Melissa here from MelissaOpen.com. Welcome to Awaken Your Inner Awesomeness, a daily podcast devoted to spirituality and self-help. If you're new, I want to welcome you. If you're returning, welcome back. So today I wanted to talk to you about being okay when you're struggling. A lot of people think that they have to be strong and they have to get through every difficulty with a brave face and that they can't break down because that shows weakness of some kind. And I'm here to tell you that we all struggle at one point or another in our lives. It's natural. It's just something that we have to go through. But the important thing is to remember that you're human and it's okay if you're struggling. It's okay if you're not okay all the time. As I said, we're all going to go through situations in our lives where we feel like we have to put on a brave face. We have to show others that we're doing okay. And in reality, you may be just wanting to die inside and break down and cry because you know you're not okay. And I'm here to tell you that it's a perfectly normal thing to have an emotional breakdown at times. We all do it. You can't be brave all of the time. You can't hide your emotions all the time. I talked about how stuffing down your emotions is not a good thing because they don't go anywhere. They're still there. They just come out later in ways that are very destructive. So it's important for you to recognize when you're struggling. And the main thing that I want you to take away from today is that it's okay for you to struggle. And it's okay for you to say, I'm struggling. That's very difficult for a lot of people. I've been watching my mom recently as she's going through her cancer treatment. And this has been a hard thing for her because she doesn't want to be a burden to anyone. And I know many of us feel that way, especially if we're the ones who are used to taking care of others. And then it's our turn to need someone else to take care of us. We don't want to be a burden. But the problem is that when you don't allow others to step in and help you, you're actually robbing them of their ability to do good things for others, which makes them feel good about themselves. We don't often think about that, but God puts us in other people's paths sometimes to help them. So if God puts someone in your path who wants to help you and you're like, no, 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 it's okay, I don't need help. You're robbing that person of being able to fulfill the nudge that God gave them to come in and help you. So that's one way to look at it. But another way to look at it, you know, sitting there with my mom, is that when you don't admit, hey, I'm struggling, and you just try to fight it back all the time and put on that brave face, you're not going through the stages of, well, she's going through the stages of grief. You're not going through the stages of releasing the emotion that you need to release. And that can cause you to become even sicker. If you're going through an illness, that can cause more sickness because emotional pain, when it's trapped inside the body, actually does damage to our body. So it's important for you to express it, to get through it, and to release it. And it's been important for my mom as well. I know a big struggle for her is not wanting to look weak. A lot of people think that if they ask for help or if they let people know they're struggling, that it's a sign of weakness. And I have to tell you that I'm one of those people who tries to put on a brave face sometimes and trudges through my issues and like, I'm going to get through this. I'm going to be okay. And right now, I'm struggling a little bit too. Because I'm struggling in watching my mom suffer and her health to decline even more and not to know what to do to make it better for her. Because unfortunately, that's where we are. We can't do anything right now to help her. She's got to get the strength in her and the fight in her to help herself. A big part of her issue lately has been not eating. Taking in around 400 calories for a day, which is nothing, right? Like, that's my breakfast is 400 calories, you know, I mean, she's hardly eating anything. So it's been a struggle because one thing leads to another, 
her not eating led to being weak and tired, which leads to depression because she can't get up and do anything because she doesn't feel well. And it's a vicious cycle. So we kind of all got together and we're like, listen, she's struggling. What do we need to do? How can we help her? And so we decided the biggest thing we need to do is tackle that mental struggle that she's going through. So we just sat down with her and we're like, look, it's okay to struggle. Like we know you're struggling. You don't have to try to hide it. You're struggling. And then the waterworks came, right? Tears flooded and she's like, I'm just tired of being sick. I don't want to feel this way anymore. And we're all looking at her like, and saying things, of course, you say, I understand. How can we truly understand? We're not going through it. We don't feel the physical symptoms she's feeling. But we say to her, we understand and it's okay that you're struggling. We know you want your health back like immediately. But it takes patience because it's, a process. It's a step-by-step process. You've got to get through what you're going through today and what you'll be going through, you know, in a few weeks and down the road, it's going to return. You're going to be back to normal. And this part sucks right now and it's hard, but you can't think about, you know, the long journey. You have to take it one step at a time, one day at a time. And I know there are many of you out there who are struggling with something in your life. And I'm here to tell you the best way to do this is to take it one day at a time. If you can get through the day and when you start to feel crappy, do some things to help you lift your mood. You can do a meditation. You can do a quick EFT tapping. That's emotional freedom technique. And go to YouTube. I have my own YouTube channel where I have free guided meditations and I have also some tappings. But there are a lot of people out there who have guided meditations, who have tappings on YouTube. Just search for whatever it is that you're feeling. Sometimes we don't even know what it is we're feeling. You know, we just know we don't feel right. We know that we just aren't feeling like ourselves. When you start to feel that way, do some things that really raise your vibration. Some of the quickest things you can do is to go for a walk. Go outside in nature, put your feet in the grass. That's grounding yourself to Mother Earth. You can listen to some uplifting music. And there are these tones that you can listen to on YouTube, the Selfeggio tones. Just do a search for angelic tones on YouTube and they raise your mood. People have singing bowls on YouTube. You know, everyone finds things that really relate to them. You have to find what works for you. And that's kind of through trial and error, right? Going through all of these things and saying, did that work for me or did it not? And don't feel bad if someone suggests, hey, do a meditation and you do the meditation and you're like, I don't feel any different. You have to find what works for you. And what works for you may not work for me and vice versa. But go and try all of these things. Try the listening to the music and the tones and Even finding the singing bowls that are have healing tones, you can listen to that. Go try Reiki. Reiki is great for clearing your energy. And sometimes I think we just have energy that's blocked in our bodies. It's like after we've been around people who are very toxic or what I like to call energy vampires, we can feel really yucky. So it's good for you to take time and really clear your energy. And you can pay for a Reiki session, which is great and leaves you feeling really great afterwards. You can also do a guided meditation for clearing your energy. I think I have one of those on my YouTube channel. Every little thing that you can do helps. And for me, a big thing that helps is affirmations. Because affirmations are a way that we are changing our self-talk. A big part of how we feel has to do with what we're saying to ourselves. For example, my mom keeps saying, I don't think I can do this. I don't think this is going to work. I don't have a good feeling. Well, what is she doing? She is calling in all of this negative stuff into being. And that's what we do when we focus on the negative. That's what grows. And I really feel like if you were to look at people going through similar situations, and maybe you know this from firsthand experience, some people, it's like they go through treatments and that, and they it, it's almost like 
nothing phases them. Like they're still continuing to work and they still continue to do things. And then some people don't respond well. And I'm here to tell you it's 100% a mindset thing. It really is. Because I don't care. I mean, yes, we know that chemo is breaking down the body and it doesn't leave you feeling well. But there are a lot of people who still manage to get up and go. And the doctors have even said, you've got to just keep moving. You've got to get up and push through it even when you don't want to. And that's the same for everyone. If you're struggling with depression, whatever it is, you can't sit still and do nothing because that makes it worse. And you're creating your own mental prison that you are now trapped in when you start going down the spiral of negative thinking. So if you really want to see a difference in your life, if you want to get out of this depression or this struggle that you're feeling, you got to start taking the steps and changing your behavior. If you want things to change, you have to change. It starts with you. So the first thing you can do is start by doing a little meditation. I mean, sometimes meditations can be very quick. I have a free morning and evening meditation on my website. If you subscribe to my website, it will send you an email with links to those meditations. And they're like three or five minutes long, not very long at all, but it's just enough to kind of reset your brain. There are a lot of things you can do to reset your central nervous system. One of the things you can do, believe it or not, is to hang your head upside down. That sounds weird, but it actually resets your central nervous system. Also, another thing to really quickly get yourself out of that, that loop and that record that keeps playing in your head is to quickly think of things that you're grateful for. And that's kind of what we did with my mom today. I'm like, okay, I know this sucks, but here's what you still have. Okay, here's what you still have. You have all of us. We're surrounding you. We love you. You know, you're safe in your home and you have a warm home to be in or cool in this case because it's summertime still. Um, you have, you know, people checking in on you who love you. And we're just going through all of the things that she has. But it's, it's doing two things. It's redirecting the brain. So now she's not stuck in that loop of negative thinking. And it's also showing you how much you already have to be grateful for because we really do have so much to be grateful for. And it's okay to have a breakdown and just cry your eyes out if you need to. You have to get those emotions out. You do. What's not okay is to stay stuck in that place where all you do is cry because that's not healthy for you. And it takes a lot sometimes to pull ourselves out of that funk, but it is so necessary. So again, do a meditation, do a tapping, listen to some uplifting music, watch yourself like be mindful and being mindful doesn't just include like oh I'm doing meditations and I'm trying not to think negatively it also includes are you surrounding yourself with negative people are you looking at social media all the time and seeing negative things because believe it or not that has an effect on you are you eating really crappy foods because that's going to affect you as well the thing is we love our foods and our processed foods, but I'm here to tell you that a lot of times that processed food is what causes us to feel crappy. Sugar actually has a weird effect in that it can make you feel, I mean, at first when you eat it, it's like a high and you're like, I need this again, but eventually it just makes you feel bad. And we also just did some research where sugar is cancer feeds off of it. So it's really not good to have sugar as part of your diet if you're going through cancer treatment. So it's amazing that our body tells us what we need. We just have to start listening to it and paying attention to it. Are you drinking enough water? You know, that's one I still, I have to check myself and say, oh, you know what? I don't think I had any water today. I need to go drink a couple of bottles of water or glasses of water because I'm a coffee drinker and I drink it throughout the day. I just do. I always have, but that is something that can dehydrate you. So I've got to make sure I'm drinking plenty of water. And I notice whenever I'm not doing what I know I should be doing, my body tells me and I can feel it. Um, you know, I, I can feel today that yesterday I didn't have enough water. So today now I need to like double up on all of that. Our body has ways of telling us. And so when you aren't properly hydrated, when you're not eating well, when you're not getting enough sleep at night, 
you'll feel sluggish and it's easier for you to fall into that state of negative thinking and depression. Nutrition absolutely affects your body. And we're seeing that with my mom right now. That's her biggest issue. If she could eat more, she would feel better. And in fact, we're taking her in a little bit to go have fluids put in her. They did that last week. And afterwards, she was great. Um, it was, she was like a new person. So we thought, okay, let's try that again because that's not going to be a bad thing to help flush out that system. So she's going to go get some fluids and we're hoping that that's going to make a world of difference with her. It's tough, you know. I mean, today I went over there and her hair was coming out pretty rapidly and she has very thick hair. And so she decided today she wanted to shave it off. So I went over there with her. We have, luckily, my cousin is a beautician and has a shop just next door. So she walked next door. I went down there, and as my cousin was shaving her head, tears were just flowing. And I felt so bad. And we were all reassuring her, you know what, it's okay to cry over this. I mean, she felt kind of silly, I think, because she's crying over something so superficial as her hair. But we're like, we get it. Like, I would bawl if that happened to me, I know. And we're trying to tell her, it's okay. It's okay for you to feel this way. It's okay for you to be struggling with this. But the best thing you can do when you're struggling is to ask for help. And so luckily, she's finally realizing she needs help. So we're getting her counseling, and they're going to talk about maybe giving her something to counteract the depression, because that is a side effect but she's also grieving because she's grieving for the life that she used to have that she doesn't have anymore because she doesn't have the strength to even get up and go out anymore. And she worked, 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 worked. Um, and I think that this illness, honestly, is a wake-up call for her that she needs to start taking better care of herself. And sometimes we need those reminders. Sometimes we have to have those tower moments that come into our lives because we wouldn't change anything if we didn't and I know for sure that this will change her and hopefully for the better hopefully she will take the lesson of never taking her health for granted and making sure she's eating right and sleeping and so she can work after this but you know don't work so much that you're getting physically sick and I really think that that is what happened with her and I think that it's a lesson for her and mindset too. She can be a very negative person. And when you are focused only on the negative, you're going to see more negative things come in. And having negative and fear-based feelings and emotions in your body all the time is not good for you because it does cause those physical illnesses. I see it all the time with Reiki patients. People come to me and they want to do Reiki and I start telling them what I see in their body, like what's going on with you, almost always it is associated with an emotion or with a situation that's happening in their lives. Like, okay, you're feeling resentful and angry about this. And now you've got this physical symptom that's going along with it. And you're feeling this in your body. And when you look at the energy chakras and you look at what the energy chakras control in the body, and you look at where they're blocked, it always matches up. It's always an alignment. I'm amazed when I go back. I mean, if you want to know why you're feeling things in your body, go look at those energy chakras. You can go to Pinterest and look up the seven energy chakras, and they have charts there that show you what each chakra controls and what functions in the body it controls and the emotions that um, align up with that particular energy chakra. And then you can see how, hey, when I was feeling this and I was going through this one situation, I was having these physical symptoms as well. And it just lines up perfectly. There are times in my life when I was angry over something and I felt stabbed in the back. And literally, I had pain right behind my shoulder blade. Like someone stuck a knife there, it was like a sharp shooting pain. And whenever I address the emotional issue and I did the healing, I did a Reiki healing, it was gone. And it was because the physical symptom was just 
a symptom that had occurred because of the emotional thing that I was carrying around. It is so incredibly interesting how those things line up, how disease and illness are related oftentimes to emotions that we're battling up and things that we're not healing. My mentor talks about it all the time, how she healed herself from Lyme disease by working on the emotional stuff. Then the physical stuff started to heal as well. And I think that there have been many studies done to show how negative self-talk and thinking and illness kind of go hand in hand. And think about the people you know in your life. The ones that I know who are very negative people are also people who are sick all the time. And that's not a coincidence. When we are thinking negatively and feeling bad, we are lowering the ability of our immune system to fight off things. We just are. That's why it's so important for you to take care of yourself from the inside out. So eating right, getting some exercise, drinking lots of water, getting plenty of sleep at night, taking care of the you inside. So doing your meditations, doing affirmations, doing tappings, listening to positive music, listening to positive podcasts or audio books that help bring you up and make you feel good about yourself, not things that tear you down. Joining social media groups that are positive and uplifting Not being in groups where they just complain and gripe all of the time because that has an effect too. You deserve to take care of yourself. And it's perfectly normal for you to struggle at times. It is. You should never ever feel bad about that or feel like you have to hide that you're struggling or try to put on this face that is a a false mask that everything's great, everything's fine, I love it, my life's amazing when you're struggling because you don't need to do that. You have the right to say, I'm struggling. I'm not okay right now because you don't have to stay in that place. As long as you understand and recognize that you're struggling and you take the steps you need to take to fix it, everything's going to be fine. The struggle doesn't last forever. We always come through the storms and the sun always shines again. So the important thing is to know that the sun is just waiting to come through the clouds. So keep your face always pointed towards the sun because you will see it again and it will shine again and you will get through this and everything is going to be okay. You are okay. It's okay to not always be okay. But when you know that you're starting to feel that way, take the steps necessary to get yourself back into alignment, to balance your energy again so that you can start feeling better. No one wants to feel crappy and you deserve to be happy. I have a YouTube video that is all about getting back into alignment and how to raise your energy. So go check that out. I give you tips. It's pretty much the same stuff I covered in the podcast today, but I might have a few extra tips there. So go check out that video and then start taking action to take care of yourself. You deserve to be healthy, happy, and whole. And I, for one, hope that you are. I picked a card for you today, and the card I picked is from the Numerology Guidance Cards by Michelle Buchanan, and the card that came out is New Beginnings. I think this is really interesting because it's the number one card in the deck, but I'm going to read the extended message to you because this is not a deck I use very often, but I will say that immediately with New Beginnings... I am getting the message that you need to take the steps necessary to have a new beginning in your life as far as keeping yourself healthy and happy. The extended message here is this card indicates a time of new beginnings where there will be plenty of opportunities to create a fresh start. The opportunities play a very important part in catapulting you to where you need to be. 
so it's in your best interest to follow them wherever they may lead. By drawing this card, you're being encouraged to find the inner strength and courage to step into the unknown, to feel the fear and do it anyway, and create a brand new life. New opportunities may present themselves in the area of relationships, home, or career. There might be a chance to move, study, or travel, or embark on an exciting new endeavor. Regardless, you must pay attention to the signs and seize the moment when it arises. When you're open to new beginnings, the universe will send you the next logical step to take. In order to complete, excuse me, in order to improve your situation, you are being asked to adjust to and harmonize with the natural rhythm and cycles of your life. Cycles that are leading you toward an exciting new beginning. So be optimistic and ambitious and move with the changing tides. Embrace the mystery and the unknown and you will make your dreams come true. There's an affirmation that comes with this card and it is, I embrace new beginnings and make my dreams come true. All right. I love that. Such an exciting card. New beginnings can be very, very exciting. So I love that message for you. All right, guys, I want to thank you so much for being here with me. As always, if you like this podcast, please subscribe. Please leave a review from wherever you're listening. You can leave me some stars on iTunes and share it with your friends. That always helps me. And if you want to work with me, if you'd like a Reiki session or a coaching session, you can go to my website, melissaopen.com. There you can purchase the session on my offerings page. And when you're ready to schedule, just contact me. and We will set up your session. All of my sessions are done online through Zoom. That way you can be in the comfort of your own home. It also gives me more flexibility with scheduling. All right, guys, don't forget to follow me on social media. I go live Mondays at 6.30 Central Time on Facebook where I do a free card reading for you. And if you show up for the live, I will pull a card for you that's personalized as well. I hope that you guys have a beautiful day from wherever you're listening. I am sending you so much love and light, and I will talk to you soon. Bye, guys.